the UN is at the heart and the root of all of these problems. And right now we have a situation in Australia that is crucial for everyone to understand. We have what's called the voice being proposed. Let me explain to you why this matters for every single person everywhere in the world. This is not an Australian agenda. It is driven by the United Nations. I'll explain. What they're saying is that they want to change our constitution to give Aboriginal people a voice in the constitution, but they're not going to tell us what changes are going to be made to the constitution until after we vote yes. Why are they doing that? Well, it's very, very simple. The United Nations under their UNDRIP documents require states to change their laws to pretend that they're elevating the Indigenous people of the land and actually implement advisory bodies that do not really represent them so that they can steal the land of the country. And I wanted to bring a very, very important guest on today. Her name is Grandmother Malara. She's an Aboriginal senior law woman who also holds a Juris Doctor in colonial law. She's joined me before and she is doing a phenomenal job exposing this If there really was an Aboriginal voice, it would belong to someone like her. But the Australian Electoral Commission, who's currently tweeting out, potentially encouraging people to vote multiple times, we'll talk about that in a moment, uh, has been determined to silence her. Grandmother Malara, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate your time. Hello, Maria. Good to be here. It's wonderful to see you again. So I've given a little bit of an overview for people to understand what The Voice is actually about and explained how it's not just an Australian issue. In fact, they've been doing this in Canada and it's already caused devastating outcomes for the Indigenous communities there. Uh, They're doing this under the guise of biodiversity and it all goes back to the UN 30 by 30 agenda. I made a promise to you that I was going to find the links to the UN with The Voice, and I've done that. That report's coming out later on this week. But I want to hear about how the Australian government is actually silencing your voice. Talk us through this journey, please. Um, On social media, where I'm putting information out and talking to people about and, and, and publishing videos with other elders, talking about our perspective and saying, no, we, we don't want this, this is not... Uh, this is going to force us to contract with the corporate government, which is not duly elected. It's uh, it's um, unlawful. But apart from that, we have our own laws and we have our own way of governing. But the, the whole UN agenda is to take charge, take over at the lands to um, – and, and the uh, Electoral Commission, they have blanket to put a blanket stop on all of us that do not conform – to the Electoral Commission's format. Yes, I want to bring that up on the screen right now. Team, if you can get... Oh, sorry, only those saying no, though. They're not doing it to anyone that's... Yes, of course. I want to get that that image up on the screen. Team, if you can bring image one up, I've actually uh, uh, made sure that we've blocked out Grandmother Malara's personal information on that letter. That's a letter from the Australian Electoral Commission. What this letter says is because Grandmother Malara, who's actually not only qualified, but uh, as an elder in uh, in the community, she is the most qualified to speak on these issues. The Australian Electoral Commission, which is responsible for, uh, you know, this referendum, is saying that they have, um, because Grandmother Malara has been speaking on this issue that affects her people directly, uh, she doesn't have approval to speak on this because they, uh, they passed a law right before they announced the referendum that uh, whether you are promoting or opposing this referendum, you have to get their approval. Uh Grandmother Malara, you are an Aboriginal elder. Do you need the approval of the Australian Electoral Commission to speak on behalf of your people? No. In fact, they probably need our approval to even run a referendum that concerns us. How how on earth do do people think that they can make a decision that regarding somebody else 
Well, you know, it's very, very similar to other campaigns that are driven by the government where they get celebrities to come and say that they're voting yes and write songs that apparently represent the Aboriginal people's uh, voice when, in fact... Uh, that that is not the case. And if the team can, I've sent some some B-roll footage to them to show there have been protests around the country where the tribal people are saying, we do not want this. The people are standing with them saying, we know exactly what this is about. Uh, and so I want to ask you, Grandmother Malara, are the tribal people aware that this is going to actually cause them to lose their sovereignty? Because right now, your Aboriginal law is above the colonial law as far as your community is concerned and it is a fact we have the law of the land and they wanting it because they want the land they want to sell the land they want it the un is behind this move for sure so um the tribal people do not want this voice whatsoever they do not want this referendum full stop and it's only what we call the corporate blacks that are behind it or that the people who are paid to uh, promote the, the yes camp, those who are paid, who are going to get a paid position perhaps in uh, such a body. It's actually only voting for a body. It's not voting, a corporate body that is. It's not even voting really for anything to do with us. They're just calling it in our name. Yes, and this is exactly what I, I'm going to detail in the report being released released later this week. Everyone, that'll be up on zmedia.com. It's a very detailed report about the UN 30 by 30. In fact, Greg Reese has reported on this previously, uh, but, but uh, we really just go and expand on it. The UN 30 by 30, which they're going to come in and say, oh, because of conservation, we need to conserve this land. And by the way, the Council of Foreign Relations says not only 30 percent do we need to conserve and make inaccessible to humans, uh, it's actually 50 or maybe even 80 percent of the land that we need to conserve and they want no one to be able to access it. And who stands in the way of that right now? See, Grandmother Malara, I actually believe that Australia is in a stronger position than many countries because the tribal people stand in the way of the UN doing this. We know that. Uh, whether uh, our fellow Australians know that or not is almost irrelevant, although it is relevant coming to a vote. We know that we are standing in the way because we have not ceded our sovereignty. We hold the law of this land and we will always hold the law of this land. And that's the obligation for me as a senior law woman is to stand up uh, for the land and for our law. It cannot be taken from us in this way. And it's, it's, a, uh, it's a slate of hand effort to try and, you know, uh, uh, sell off our country, sell off our land for those to, to the UN, to corporate mining giants, to other corporations. And if we look at who is funding the Yes campaign, it's not only a, go a bankrupt government, but it's also many, many corporations are involved. We don't have one cent being, being supported, sponsored to the what, No campaign. That speaks volumes in and of itself. So we are, we are holding the fort here and we are stopping, we are going to stop this from happening. And in stopping it in Australia, we are stopping it for, for the whole new world order to take over the entire uh, global landscape. Well, well, this is crucial, what you've just said, because <clears throat> if people understand the undrip documents are <clears throat> calling for, in fact, the convention that they had earlier this year says that every single country needs to implement this. So Australia right now, as with many, many other things, is the test bed for this UN takeover, which will facilitate the smart city implementation because they'll say, oh, this is heritage land. They'll pretend that Indigenous peoples have spoken for this land when, in fact, they haven't been consulted in the process and they'll say no one's allowed here because we need to conserve it for the Indigenous peoples. This is how it's going to operate. And it, they, they're saying that this needs to happen in every single country. This is how smart cities will be achieved because people will only be allowed in certain areas. So as, as you just said, Australia's standing in the way of this. If we can show an example to the world of no, actually, we need to stand with the original custodians of this land and uh, and realize that they're standing in the way of the entire new world order. This is colossal. We are aware of that, and we are. 
and it it just cannot happen. We will never ever cede our sovereignty. Most most of us do not want a a, a treaty. Words of a treaty that's a contract. We don't want that with our government, and because we don't have that with our government, the corporate government, they can't come in and take over. But in every other country, bar Russia, I think, there has been a treaty between the original sovereign peoples and the um, colonial governments, whatever, for want of a better word. So we're the only ones that haven't. So therefore, we're going to stop the whole thing. And I'm so, so glad to see the the people in our country standing up to this and realising what it, what it really is. If there's one good thing that is coming out of this New World Order, <clears throat> excuse me, attempt to take over the world, it's the awakening of the masses to the fact that they cannot trust their governments, something your people mm. should know very well. Uh, because our government certainly has never cared about the traditional custodians of this land. I don't think they plan on starting to care about them now. The human rights abuses that have happened around the world in the name of conservation of Indigenous people are, are many, and the UN and, you know, all their NGOs are linked to many of them. When we come back from this break, I want to talk about how they're actually, uh, they've, they've been targeting you, silencing you, taking your videos down where you are displaying the will of the elders in this country uh, and how the AEC is potentially trying to rig the votes. Don't go anywhere. This is crucial for everyone. We'll be right back. Unbelievable groundswell of resistance to this uh, so-called voice uh, the the Prime Minister has even had to address the UN conspiracy, as he calls it, saying that, oh, you know, there's all these conspiracies going around, that the UN's going to take the land and, uh, you know, and, and I, I think th thus far, as I mentioned to Grandmother Malara before, thus far we've really not had the documentation to prove it, but I do. I've got the receipts and it's coming out this week and I can't wait to share it with Australia and the whole world. Uh, Grandmother Malara is here with me. She's a she's an Aboriginal senior law woman who also holds a Juris Doctor in colonial law. She's absolutely one of the most, uh, you know, qualified people to speak on this issue. And yet the Australian Electoral Commission and it seems big tech have been attacking her. One of your videos got pulled down from the Internet. Uh, please talk to us about what was contained in that video uh, and uh, and why they pulled it down. It's the very first broadcast I made on my thoughts of the voice and it got pulled down. Mind you, it took them four months to find it, but it, it got pulled down because it had well over a million views. Uh, it was a surprise to me how popular it was going to be, but well over a million views and it was telling the truth with law and law, both, both L-O-R-E and L-A-W, and I was telling the truth. And so the... Uh, when I got the Electoral Commission letter, on the what was attached to it was a copy of a brochure that, that someone else had put together, which was all of the words that I'd had on that video in, uh, in written form. And they had a QR code to it linked to the video, one version of it, and on one, on one platform, I mean. And, the, uh, and therefore, it's interesting that I had that pulled, that video was pulled off Vimeo, which I'm a personal subscriber to, they pulled it. So then I qu then I quickly put it on another platform. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're jumping ahead of them. If they think that we're going to take their, uh, you know, their slap in the face as a slap in the face, they've got another thing coming. We have many ways in which very clever people, which we can um, deal with them. So that was that was a big surprise. Uh, and of course, on social media, Facebook, et cetera, uh, wherever I'm being um, pushed by my uh, our digital warriors, uh, they're now getting oh this they're now getting what they call fact checked. But then we've found that the fact checkers themselves have been caught at lying. So it, it's a real circus over here. It's an absolute circus. I've I I mentioned to you on the phone yesterday that I am actually uh, deeply offended on your behalf, uh, and the reason is because everywhere you look, uh, radio ads, TV ads, constantly yes campaign in your face, telling me 
that uh, that that if I don't vote yes, I'm a racist, and this is going to give the Aboriginal people a voice. And yet, I know an elder, and she's sitting in front of me right now, and her videos are being pulled down, and she's getting fact checked by RMIT, who's now been disbanded because they've been exposed. Uh, RMIT fact check. So you know, I, I mean, w where is your voice in this? Where is your voice, Grandmother Malara? It's a very good question, but I tell you what, I. I'm being called into many meetings uh, with with concerned people uh, who want to help us and promote the truth. That's what we want. We want the truth. And we don't want this uh, garbage UN takeover un in disguised as the voice. This voice notion is only to set up a cor another corporate body to receive funds. So where's my voice? Well, I'm here speaking with you. Thank you very much, Maria. <laughs> the, you know, you, you mentioned something crucial there because UNDRIP actually talks about uh, things like reparations and collecting compensation and things like that. Uh, and again, that's not going to go to your people. That's going to go to the corporation that's set up pretending that it's representing the Aboriginal people. This is how it always works. In fact, we have many of those structures already in place. We, we uh, The Australian government collects and, and distributes millions upon millions of dollars every year, and yet who actually gets that money? It's a good question, and, in fact, I think it might even be in the billions, the money. It, it, it goes to there are over 3,000 Aboriginal corporations already set up in this country. Who needs another one? But this particular one, the voice body, will uh, take control of the whole of Australia. At this point in time, the other Aboriginal corporations that they've set up are in various states and in various regional areas, or they're doing certain other, other um, tasks. But none of the money goes to our actual tribal people that really need it. There's, we don't have we don't have our own people who are uh, uh, you know poor. They're living in poverty. We're in third world, even less than third world country conditions. They get not one cent from their own people who are sitting on a land council, and a corporate land council uh, uh, get funding from the corporate government to do their bidding. We are in trouble if this voice goes through. In fact, I'd, I'd almost predict there could be social unrest. Well, I wouldn't be surprised, and let me tell you, if it does go through, I would almost say that it's a, a surefire sign that we have rigged elections because there is so much opposition to this, and I know from the Aboriginal people there is a, 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 a um, you know, unsurmounting... Uh, uh, maybe that's not the word. There is so much opposition. Uh, I want to bring up, it, team, if you can bring up uh, the image too from the Australian Electoral Commission, they were responding to people on X and they actually said here, if someone votes at uh, two different polling places, because again, this is going to a referendum vote next, uh, well, this month now, if someone votes at two different polling places within their electorate and passes uh, places their formal vote in the ballot box at each polling place, their vote is counted. My response to this on X was... This can actually be taken as the Australian Electoral Commission signalling to people how to rig this referendum. What are your thoughts on this, Grandmother Malara? Uh, it's extraordinary. It would definitely be unconstitutional. One person, one vote is constitutional. Here we are voting about a constitutional change in an unconstitutional manner. It, it, it's extraordinary. It, they should be saying you can only vote once. I shouldn't be saying, oh, vote more than once and you might be able to get away with it. <laughs> it's unbelievable, isn't it? I mean, he here's the thing. They they followed up saying, oh, you know, these cases are very rare, usually uh, from people that, uh, that may have mental health issues or whatever. But the point is you're not supposed to, as you just outlined perfectly, you're not supposed to be promoting the possibility of voting multiple times. You are supposed to be uh, telling people how they should not be doing this. One more very, very important image I want to bring up on the screen, T image three, this is a, a, a member of parliament uh, allegedly mm. that, that posted this and it, it it was amended very quickly because it went viral. 
can't vote, vote mm. in person on October 14th. Good news. The AEC have now released the early voting locations for this particular electorate. And she goes on to hashtag vote often. The timing of, of, a, of a member of parliament saying to people to vote often while the AEC are telling you how you can uh, effectively rig this referendum. I mean, this is astounding. I don't even know what to say. It's it's just it, it it's unprecedented is probably the word and it looks like they're preparing to uh, lay the foundation for people to accept that there will be multiple voting by one person or and more more than one person that it's that it's coming. Well, you know, there was a viral clip. I, I don't have it with me today, but basically there was a viral clip of a yes campaigner uh, that spat on someone uh, and, and you know, this went everywhere and, and basically assaulted this person. And this is really the mental state of some of these people that are buying into the government lie. So it wouldn't surprise me if they went around and voted multiple times after that signal from the AEC. I want to ask you, Grandmother Malara, uh, about you know, some of the things that they did to your community during COVID and this pretending of the government that they actually care about the Aboriginal people. Uh, I was contacted by a former New Northern Territory police sergeant who sent me footage of them injecting uh, Aboriginal people in remote communities under a tree, no gloves, rubbish sitting next to them. Uh, this is how they, they deem appropriate health care for those remote communities, apparently. Unfortunately... They bribed. So first of all, they came in force, and our people are a, a little bit of, you know, there's there's a fear about people in uniform because we've had we've got a history of having our children taken away by police coming in um, over the years. I won't go into that right now. But what what it is is when they come in in uniform, in particular, and in a lot a large number of them, it's very scary. That's on one hand. The other hand is they get bribed. Oh, we'll give you five hundred dollars if you take this, or you'll get tickets to the football and take bring your friends. Or there were bribery going on for people to, uh, you know, to take the jab. In effect, what that effect has happened, and we really tried hard to stop it, um, telling telling the communities this isn't what you think it is. But then they've got their own corporate blacks in their land councils who are uh, influencing the uh, the that takeover, we are now having so many, uh, what do you call it, uh, funerals, m many more than we would have ever had before in a short span of time. We are losing our elders. We believe that they were trying to take out our elders who held the song lines, who held the knowledge, who held law, who held the stories, who held the dreaming uh, intact. They were aiming to wipe us out. Uh, for, for anyone who isn't aware, in w within Aboriginal culture, they're very, very um, aware of the funerals that are happening. Uh, it's it's very common for people to be aware of, uh, I think, probably all over the country. Correct me if I'm wrong here, Grandmother Malara. So when you say that there are much more funerals happening, uh, especially as an elder, you would you would know this. It's not just, you know, your opinion. You, you're actually verifiably able to prove this. Oh, that's true. I, I myself have been to three funerals within the span of three weeks. Uh, you know, it's been it's been very sad to see this happen. And there's a lot of us who are reeling from we, we've lost some very, very important elders. And that's why we must step up. All of us must step up. That there, there will be yes. no question in my mind and in my other uh, brothers and sisters' minds, the tribal brothers and sisters, that this is a big takeover and that's how it's going to happen. In fact, everyone will lose their title to land because your your interests, your rights is in the title to the land. So <clears throat> even, even people who aren't uh, original people who live here, their own land titles, their certificate of title has already been digitised. They don't have a hard copy. It's already happening. And all those digital... Uh, titles will all then be massed and they have already, some have already been massed in a state <clears throat> and sold off to a private enterprise, a private corporation in another country. And that is like a lien and to, to raise funds against selling off our land.
and then they can come in and our land is rich in mineral resources. So it, well, there's uh, a lot of reasons. Gr Grandmother Malara, you know, I could I could talk to you all day about this because the agenda is so vast. And again, uh, you are definitely, uh, in my opinion, one of the uh, most important people to speak about this. Uh, you should be the one on on the parliament steps that they that they're promoting that they've spoken to you and and all of the community members that this actually affects. But that is not what this is. Again, uh, you mentioned the land titles. This is something that Tom Renz. Uh, spoke about with me, I believe, on this broadcast where he spoke about the fact that these were digitised now uh, and it was basically a digital ledger and this is how they were going to seize assets worldwide. This is not just an Australian problem. The voice is just the mechanism that they're doing it in Australia uh, and, you know, there's there's a different tactic everywhere. But I'm telling you now, look up Undrip and wait for this report later on this week, everyone, uh, because it's going to really detail how they're going to do it everywhere. Grandmother Malara, we're, we're out of time today. Uh, you can find more information on Grandmother uh, Malara's website, grandmotherwisdom.com. Uh, she's also on Facebook, and I really do encourage everyone to, to listen to what she has to say. So I'd just like to, to not put this to a vote is to concede defeat. You only win when you run on the field and engage. And let me tell you, my government is engaged. We're all in.